guys, the topic that was assigned to me is electronic learning or e-learning. So what is e-learning? E-learning refers to a learning system that one can obtain through the internet using an electronic device like cellular phones and laptops. Nowadays, Cell phones and other electronic gadgets are widely used in a daily basis, especially at school. Like, if you have your phone with you, you can search right away that should be needed, like an assignment, a project, and such. So, laptops or computers are also one of the most used every day especially in schools and e-learning as courses that are specifically delivered via the internet to somewhere other than classroom where the professor is teaching like a traditional setting in a face-to-face -face interaction in a classroom so it is not a course delivered via a dvd or cd videotape or over a television channel. E-learning is also interactive that you can also communicate with your teachers, professors, or other students in your class. Sometimes it is delivered live where you can electronically raise your hand and interact in real time and sometimes it is a lecture that has been pre-recorded. In e-learning, there is always a teacher or a professor interacting or communicating with you or grading your participation or assignments and your test. So, there are advantages and disadvantages of electronic learning advantages first is you are able to link the various resources in several varying formats second it is a very efficient way of delivering courses online third is due to its convenience and flexibility the resources are available from anywhere at any time if you have your internet connection with you at home or some places. Fourth is everyone who are part-time students or are working full-time can take adv advantage of web-based learning. Since it is an electronic learning and you are accessing in a web-based learning, yes, the internet connection is also very much needed for you to connect through the web. So, I have here also the disadvantage. First is most of the online assessments are limited to questions that are only objective in nature. You, can, you cannot question right away because... Yes, it is limited to questions that are only in an objective in nature. So, you have to understand it so that you can answer it right away. There is also the problem of the extent of security of online learning programs. And third is the authenticity of a particular student's work is also a problem as online just about anyone can do a project rather than the actual student itself. Fourth is the assessments that are computer marked generally have a tendency of being only knowledge based and not necessarily practical practicality based. So that was my topic guys and thank you for listening. Good morning everyone, this is Princess Elaine Moreno, pre-porting. Next topic would be teleconferencing. Teleconferencing comes from two words, tele which means 
at or over a long distance and conference, which means a formal meeting in which many people gather in order to talk about ideas. Conferencing is a participation in a conference that involves use of particular electronic technology. It is a meeting with a colleague using an electronic communication system such as your phone, personal computer, or specialized video conferencing equipment. Next, teleconferencing is a meeting through telecommunication medium. It is also a generic term for linking people between two or more locations by electronics. So basically, teleconferencing is the use of telephones and video equipment to have a meeting with people who are in different places. What are the advantages of using teleconferencing? First, we have move it moves information not people because communication is done at a distance it saves time for the sender doesn't need to spend time traveling to a specific venue lower cost in a way it doesn't require to spend much money it is accessible it can be used anytime and anywhere it is also adaptable flexible security unity and interactive but there are also undesirable features when using teleconferencing. For instance, it lacks of body language because participants tend to just focus on what the speaker is talking. It lacks eye contact since the participants will only be facing the monitor or whatever medium is being used. There would also no visual presentation and multitasking drains attention. There are two categories under teleconferencing. First, we have video conferencing. It is a live, visual connection between two or more people residing in separate locations for the purpose of communication. Here, both parties can hear and see each other on computer or television screens, and it provides transmission of static images and tests between two locations. What are the uses of video conferencing? It enables teacher or limited number of learners need to connect from different locations at the same time. It is free download and easy to use software for there are applications available on app stores. No time constraint since most of them are very accessible. It is specifically useful for a guest speaker who is far away from face-to-face -face class location and easy communication but using video conferencing can also have some difficulty like lack of personal interaction technical problems might happen for some instances and high cost of setup where it needs not just only the computer the application but also needs strong internet connection the second category is audio conferencing it is a telephone meeting conducted between multiple separate callers. A type of telephone used can vary but typically an audio conference includes attendees that use handheld wired telephones, conference rooms, speaker phones that can be shared by several people or individual cellular or mobile telephones. These are some benefits of audio conferencing. We can record audio for future references. Involve more collaboration, easy call management, cost effective, and is more accessible. But audio conferencing is only meant for listening. It can restrict some learners' flexibility and independence. Poor quality of transmission makes some low end technology turn off. Conversation may be affected by noise, and it does not allow interactivity with large group of participants. And that ends my report about teleconferencing. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My report is all about webinar. So what exactly is a webinar? A webinar is a live, web-based video conference that uses the internet
to connect the individual hosting the webinar to an audience of viewers and listeners from all over the world. Hosts can show themselves speaking, switching to their computer screens for slideshows or demonstrations, and even invite guests from other locations to co-host the webinar with them. seven features that the webinar contains. The first feature is streaming videos. With the use of webinar, the audience and the host can easily stream videos on different websites by just giving the hyperlink. The second feature is editing, which makes the work easier to accomplish and errors can be easily fixed. Then the next is displaying slides. Displaying slides the webinar can reduce effort or difficulty for the host in explaining complicated lessons and helps the audience in understanding the lesson easier. Next to displaying slides is recording. The host as well as the audience can record their meeting. The fifth feature is chatting. Chatting is also available in the webinar in order for the people to communicate. And while discussing, the people can not only communicate by chatting but as well as talking which helps them to clarify things easier. And lastly, after having the discussion, the host can instantly conduct a quiz or survey either with the use of slides or by having it in an oral quiz. Here are some of the advantages when using webinar. Here are some of the advantages in using webinar. The first one is it saves costs through no longer having to travel to and from the assigned meeting place. Number two, it is simple and automated registration. Number three, easy to exchange information before, during, and after the event. Fourth one is Anonymous participation is possible. There is no limit to the number of participants. And five, ability to share or download additional digital material at any time during the webinar. There are also disadvantages when using the webinar. The first disadvantage is technical problems can lead to the event being cancelled or prevent participants from joining in. Second is the participants' mood and motivation is difficult for the speaker to determine. Number three, participants could easily be distracted due to their surroundings or because they know that the speaker doesn't know what they are doing on the other side. And lastly, interaction between speaker and participant is often reduced to a minimum.